Buenas, buenas. Welcome to In The Da. I'm Kevin Ochoa, and today we're going to be talking about why you need Nugent Audio Master Check, even if you have a third-party plugin that does your metering, or if you have good metering built into your DW itself. Now, what these two meters don't do, and what Nugent Master Check does, is phenomenal. So let's listen to uh, Nugent Master Check in Delta mode. So what you just listened to was the information that Spotify removes from your signal when it's in mobile version. So all this information is removed from your original track. And that is something that all these other metering tools don't actually show you. And that's very important because when you're mastering for a streaming services, you're not just trying to check a loudness and call it a day, you know, just get your mix to minus 14 uh, LUFS. You also have to take into consideration the processing, the encoding that that streaming services does to your music, whether that's destroying the stereo signal or maybe destroying the low end or maybe destroying the low mids or whatever it is, you need to take that into consideration and mix accordingly. So I made a video last week on mixing and mastering for SoundCloud. And what we found in that video is that SoundCloud adds a lot of noise in the high end, especially in the stereo and also in the low end, we get a lot of stream information that is destroyed and moved around. And if you go back and check our video, you can go to our SoundCloud or my SoundCloud under Kevin Ochoa Audio and you can find the examples. Uh, also, please check out the uh, Nugent Audio Master Check link in the description below so you can uh, download a trial of it. I'm telling you guys, it's very important to know what is being done to your music by these streaming services. And it doesn't matter if you're using um, built-in stock plugins or a third-party plugin, they simply do not show you what is going on in your mix and what's being removed from it. Let's go back to Cubase. And in this case, not only can we see the differences, but we can monitor the output that would be heard through that encoder. So clearly we can see here inside of the Evo Studio Wave Candy that of course, because it's uh, being put through that encoder that we lose a lot of the high end. Then uh, pretty much everything above uh, 16, 17K is removed. And then we also have a lot of low mids that are um, kind of crunched up. If we go back to the encoder, Delta button, you see that a lot of the high mids and highs are removed. If we look at visualizer as well, we can see that that sound that's being removed is all the way up to around minus 25 dB. See there? That area right here around 120 hertz is being removed. So that's such a pity, but that's what we have to deal with in the era of streaming services. So now that we know that this feature is here, what does this mean? Well, this means that when we're mastering, what we have to do is either EQ some things out, compress in multiband a little bit different than what we usually would. So in my video that we uploaded last week on uh, mixing for SoundCloud, what I ended up doing was I grabbed this same track and what I did was I did a cut on the high end with just a tiny bit of EQ and actually set it to dynamic mode. So I use Fetfilter Pro Q3, set it to dynamic mode just to remove a little bit of the stereo information so my kick could punch out more. I also applied a mono filter to the low end, therefore the SoundCloud uh, algorithm wasn't destroying it. So let's put this into SoundCloud algorithm. And then we're gonna swap between the version that I mixed before Master Check, which was the one I've been playing earlier. And then we're gonna jump into the one that I mix for SoundCloud. So let's take a listen, turn on the monitor section in SoundCloud mode.
Another thing to point out is that this version that I, the, the new version that I did for SoundCloud is also a little bit quieter because I don't want to clip going into the encoder because once you go into the encoder, there's a possibility that you might clip. So yes, this version is much quieter, around one dB quieter, but it sounds cleaner to my ears. There's less harshness in the high end. Let's take a listen to the before master check version. Notice how we're peaking past 0.5 dB, and also there's a lot of wishiness. I don't know why I did that sound, but it's all the way up around, you know, the uh, 15K area. And with this one, with the new version, that high end noise, it's tucked a little bit further back, so I reduce the level of that too. But also the synthesizer sound that's in stereo, because I did some of that little multi band uh, or dynamic EQing in Fat Filter Pro Q3. I was able to remove some of that harshness. So once it's uploaded to SoundCloud, it sounds like I actually intended it to sound like. So it's very important to have that in mind. Now, the cool thing about Master Check is that it has presets for every streaming service you can think of. So we have the Apple, BBC, iPlayer Radio, uh, Pandora, SoundCloud, Spotify, Tidal, and also uh, YouTube, as well as other loudness normalization standards that you need. For example, uh, TV in Europe, TV Japan, TV USA. Also have the AES uh, streaming practice as well. Basically, you can use this to master for any streaming service. We mentioned it so far, try and use dynamics and EQ or multiband dynamics processing and EQ to fix your mix and your master before uploading to streaming services. Now, let's talk a little bit about the actual loudness itself, which is something that people like to, you know, They'll say, hey, they just set the our level at minus 14 LUFS and call it a day. It's not as simple as that. If we hop over to the Spotify website, you can read here that target loudness of your master at minus 14 dB integrated LUFS keeps it below a minus 1 dB true peak max. And it also says if your master is louder than minus 14 dB integrated LUFS, make sure it stays below minus 2 dB uh, true peak to avoid extra distortion. That is because louder tracks are more susceptible to extra distortion in the transcoding process. So not only do we have to worry about hitting the loudness, but we also have to worry about the peaks. And that is very important. So let's go back to the um, Spotify and let's set our units to be LUFS instead of LKFS. And let's take a listen to the original mix. So this is what I really wanted it to sound like everywhere. And then this is what Spotify does to it. And then if I wanted to match this to the loudness of Spotify, I have to click this button right here. Which just brings it down minus 1.7 LU which is not that much, but it's still important. As we saw earlier, we have to make sure that we don't have peaks above minus two dB because once we send this to the encoding process, we'll have lots of clipping. So what I'm gonna do now is engage the encoder so you can listen to uh, differences between my original version and what would be shown in Spotify. And then I'm gonna go to my track over here and set my level to minus two dB. And then I'm going to hit the offset to match once again when, once this is playing. You see, when I bring it up to, uh, to 0 dB, there's a lot of information that's also removed. So let's, let's hop over to the drop, which is the loudest part of the track. So you see there's less information that's being destroyed and let's open up the Nugent visualizer just so we can uh, make sure we're seeing that. Okay, so there, it's not just about setting your uh, output to be a minus or setting your, your track to be uh, minus 14 
LUFS, it's also about the peaks and how many of those peaks constantly go over the threshold that Spotify allows you to go through. So here we can see our peak metering on the mobile version, on the desktop version, and the premium version. So you see that as you go further quality or have more quality in the encoding process, you have less distortion. Eventually you get to one where it's actually no longer peaking. But even the fact that we have this set to minus uh, 2 dB, we'll see that that remains the same, right? We have minus 1.8, minus 1.6, and minus 2.2. So we go back to zero. We have some clipping in the mobile version, a little bit of clipping on desktop, and the premium is for the most part okay. But we have to keep in mind that most people are not going to be listening through the premium version or nor the desktop, but most people are listening through the mobile phones. So going back to the offset to match, the fact that we have that built in to just normalize everything to a certain loudness. And once we have that, we can decide, hey, do I just want to lower the output of my track minus 14 uh, dB uh, true peak? And once we do that, We can set the offset to match. And as you can hear again, there's less information that's being removed. So we have to keep that into consideration. Okay, so we covered why we need master check in the context of streaming services. One, because it helps us uh, via its encoder figure out what are imperfections in the frequency domain when some music is in the streaming services and it's gone through the encoder. And then we've also uh, seen how uh, if we don't normalize properly and set our peaks to certain levels, we will have clipping and distortion on our outputs when this is playing back through um, these uh, services. Now that we have all that information and we know it works in the streaming age, let's apply it to playing live and playing uh, music that's very loud. For example, EDM, which is a genre of music that tries to do the opposite of what the streaming services does. It tries to be as loud as possible with as many instruments as possible. So here I have an old version of this track from 2017. Uh, so this is basically a loudness master, a version of the track that would play it live to be as loud as possible so that the next DJ that comes after me or before me is not as loud as I am. So here I have this mix, and let's listen to it back without uh, the new Jensen. I'll show you what the new Jensen is in a moment. Let's just play it back. You can clearly hear how much louder this other track is compared to the uh, the new streaming version of the song that uh, or streaming mix that I made that's a bit quieter. Uh, and let me show you exactly how much quieter it is using the Nugen Audio uh, Send. So the Send is a little plugin that's included inside uh, any of these Nugen plugins. Basically, this allows you to send a signal directly to Master Check and keep it muted and compare it to the track that you're currently playing. So uh, if we go to the beginning of this drop, we are hear that we get only the, uh, the new version of the track that's uh, mastered a little bit more tailored for streaming services. And then over here, once we set external reference, you see that that new gen send has been activated and now I'm getting the input from this other track, even though it's muted inside Cubase. So you see that the loudness track that I had for playing in festivals is set at minus 6.7 luffs, whereas the new streaming version of the track that I have is at minus 11.2 luffs. Not only that, but the peak to short-term loudness ratio, the differences between the two tracks, And you can see there that differences between the peak to short-term loudness ratio between the two tracks is around 
minus three or not not minus three or three because um the older track is quite a bit louder than the new track or the new version of the mix for for streaming services so in your case what you want to do is put in here your reference track through the new gen audio send so if that's a if it's a track from one of your um contemporaries put it there I'm not doing that because if I were to do that, I'd get copyright striked by YouTube. So I put there a loudness version of this track that I use for playing live. So what can we do uh, besides checking the PSR and the LU difference? Well, we can reference the original track by clicking this button right here. And we can even offset to match. So for that, I'm gonna engage the limiter I'm using ISL because it's an intersample limiter because it's going to make sure that even information that's in between samples doesn't peak. So what happens with other limiters is that you have point A and point B in the digital uh, domain, and once it's out in the analog domain, you can get a clip between this point A and point B. Intersample peak limiters take that into consideration and make sure that you're not clipping even when you're in the analog domain. So make sure you're using a limiter like ISL. Now, when I hit the offset to match, my track is going to be set around plus four LU. Let's take a listen. As you can see there, it got boosted 4.5 LU. So make sure that you're using uh, an intersample limiter to make sure you're not peaking. So there you go. You can use master check to both master for streaming services in the digital age, use your encoder to make sure that you have the right character of your mix to make sure you don't have all these hissing noises or you don't have your low end getting destroyed or maybe your mids are getting uh, ducked in some of these um, encoders. So you can make sure that you use an EQ or a multiband compressor to get the right spectral information into your mix. And then you can use the loudness features such as offset to match to make sure that your mixes are going to the appropriate loudness to those streaming services. Or like I just did, you can also use it to make sure that your mix is just as loud as the next track when you're playing EDM at a festival or need to compete with people in streaming services such as SoundCloud that still don't implement a loudness normalization feature. Okay, that's going to be it for this video, guys. I want to thank you for being here with us. Make sure you check out Nugent Audio Master Check. Click the link in the description to go to their website and download a trial of it. Once again, I'm Kevin Ochoa with In The Da, and I'll talk to you soon. Peace.